As, uh, yeah, we have no no countdown on this map for some reason. And Bjorn notices that, hopefully not too much of a problem for him or anything. Um, just laughing about a little bit. Z's are laughs in Korea. So, uh, yeah, uh, game number one of this best of three. Bottom right is Zest, and the upper left is Bjorn. Now, there will be some maps we still have to see today. I believe Jack Randa is coming up in one of the maps matches that are being played for replays and stuff. But yeah, this map is, seems popular despite it being kind of like a shorter map. It's definitely one of those ones which has a little bit of a shorter distance, you know, side to side. You can attack quickly and easily on this. People people seem to be enjoying it. People seem to be liking play on this. Like I say, it gets picked a lot. I think this map has a lot of potential. It's short, but not in a bad way. So, yeah. Cool games on this so far, for the for, for sure. Yeah, this map's much better, better than Beckett Industries. The problem with Beckett, everyone's like, oh my god, short map, Beckett Industries, oh my god. But the reality is that Beckett Industries is not bad necessarily because it's so short. It's bad for a lot of other reasons. Third base to third base distance, the, the acceleration zones, the valleys, you know, the caverns in the map that you can just siege tanks over and so on and so forth. Like, there's just so many abusable positions, and that's why I think it makes Beckett more of a problem map than it's than, than just its size. You could stretch Beckett out by, like, five seconds or so, and I still think it would create a lot of problems and be a map that not a lot of people want to play on. And it's mostly just an issue as well for, like, TV Terran matchups, just because I think the tanks are just so good on the uh, defense and on the aggression. So I think... Um, I think that's mostly Beckett's issue. And in ZVP, it gets picked a fair amount. And while it might not be the most common map to go to, it's seen a fair amount, and it actually gives us reasonable games in ZVP. Like, it's I still don't think it's everyone's favorite map to play, and I think Swarm Hosts are pretty crazy being able to fire over those caverns as well. They kind of have the same strength of tank in that regard. But, you know, otherwise, it can actually play out okay. So, yeah. Alright, so um, a, a three racks opener here from Bjorn as we kick off this series, this TVP between himself and Zest. As we go around. Yeah, I see someone talking about the aesthetics. I do love the aesthetics on this map. I will say that again and again. I think the little... I always like the grey maps, maybe. Call me boring, but I'm like a very simple, like, plain person. I love, like, grey or black maps with, like, uh, this little, like, highlighting of colour. You know, it's just cute. It just, for me, it just works well. You know, it's not too much. It gives the map a bit of a good, you know, a good feel. Without being, like, overly, like, crazy and overly pretty. And I, I like some of the other maps that are overly pretty and stuff as well. But uh, I do like this map specifically for the fact that it captures, like, a good... It has a good vibe about it with, with so little added to it, you know? And Depth sent out the front as you see Stim and Combat Shields... Building from Bjorn is just going to go for this uh, through access mentioned before, and on a short map like this, this is absolutely where Zest is going to have to be extremely cautious about the timing of Bjorn's attack, and make sure that he's got the units up, because these attacks are going to hit early, they're going to hit quick, they're going to hit hard. You need to make sure you have got a defense ready for this, because otherwise you can just die to this first stim in. Um, so you got to make sure you are prepared, and with a blink setup, you absolutely should be able to be prepared here. That shouldn't be too much of an issue. Let's see our robot facility coming up on that natural expansion. The Adept continuing over to the bottom right. Just pulling back home as Zest has taken the third base. Robo's about to pop. I wouldn't even mind to see an Immortal here right away. Like, if you just go, like, straight into an Immortal, it is just that extra little bit of defense in this scenario where it actually can work pretty nice. If you're not going to go for an Immortal, I think that's fine too. You've got Blink now. I'm a little sad that there's no Stalkers on the map to kind of meet these initial Marines. Because that means you're not chipping away at this army as it moves across the map. And I feel like that does get a little scary then as there's no batteries available either. So Zest has no batteries ready to go. That's a little bit concerning. I mean, has Bjorn just gone over here without being seen? Now the stalkers show up. Stim is a moment away from being finished. If Bjorn just stims up, I genuinely do worry because... There just really isn't anything here, like, no battery. Imagine there's a super battery, right? Just units survive that much longer. The difference that makes alone is crazy as so many probes already going down. Bjorn, he's not just killing probes, though. He's also killing stalkers. 
So he's not going to be vulnerable to a counter-attack because he's already dealing with the potential of a counter-attack by getting rid of so many of these stalkers. There's no units to counter-attack with. So it wasn't just a straight-up give up my units for an economy kill. No, he actually got units out of this as well. And oh my goodness, the Marauder just goes huge. Gets a couple more kills at the end just to show off a little bit. Look at me. Look what I can do. Well, 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 Mr. Marauder. You got a couple extra kills. Good on you. Yes, he does fall, but <laughs> a really good effort. Yeah, this is um, this is bad for Zest, right? This is just the sort of damage you take, which now the follow-up is probably not going to be pretty on. This Bioforce coming across the map. Yeah, I mean, this is just going to kill him. There's just not really anything here as our Bioforce goes across down to the bottom right. Stalkers is just going to be continuing to fight. Mortal trying to hit this Marauder. A couple of Marauders continuing through. Battery. Sorry, force field coming down. Not a battery. Batteries don't exist in this game, apparently, for whatever reason. Zest doesn't like them. Kills off a few more Stalkers and just getting so much value, right? Like, all these Stalkers that are going down as Marauder actually held up the Zealot. <laughs> Another Marauder going for probes. This time, he gets stopped before he can do too much. But, uh, fine. It felt like he was just about to pop off again. Go for all the probes. Well, feels like Bjorn is absolutely just taking a commanding lead with this game and getting into some very good positions. The model's on the way out. It's going to rally out to these other few units here, and uh, that's basically going to be, I mean, his, his kind of point of defense. Bjorn is only behind seven workers, which is pretty good. Um, third base, only just built a nap, though. So his third is pretty late. So maybe in that regard, Zess could do something to kind of, you know, play catch up here. There's medevacs now in this army as well, so they're going to be that little bit better than before. Actually having some healing really increases the effectiveness of the bio naturally, so yeah, let's see if Zest can make a hold on the third base. He's going to pop Guardian Shield. He's going to fight out in the open. Kind of feigns strength. He's like, yeah, you know what? I believe I can fight here. And Bjorn's like, wait a second, you can fight here? Another Guardian Shield pops, wants to make sure that's active all of the time when units might be striking. I mean, this is going to be the real power of Bjorn's force, lifting up and dropping, because the army of Zest is not big enough to realistically split. And this is where Bjorn absolutely can just kind of move his opponent's army around a bit and really take some advantages. He doesn't commit just yet, but I actually feel like that was not a bad opportunity. I like the idea of it. Wouldn't have minded seeing that actually uh, be committed to. I think that could have been pretty cool. The rest of these stalks moving up the top. The bio force is going to start... Through the middle again. So I see a couple stalkers getting pushed back already. Bjorn continuing to come across this right hand side. I mean, maybe he just won. Maybe he just believed in his larger army fight more than anything. Force fields go down. Doesn't keep too many units away. The one zealot sets off the widow mine. Plus one attack. Not here yet from Zest. He's got no upgrades versus about to be 1 1. Bjorn is moments away from having the armor upgrade helping him out. That would have mind shot, hits the stalker that blinks to the side. The splash damage still goes out, but nothing too major, honestly. And as it looks as though Bjorn's going to get turned away, those immortals are just chunking through Marauders. Bjorn has the upgrades. He just hasn't quite found a fight right now to actually take advantage of all of these kind of fights that he's been winning. Somehow he's just not been able to, to take advantage of that just yet. Fire force into the middle. And take down these rocks. Now, there's two different rocks here, so if you really want to just uh, push through the middle, probably want to kill off both. Obviously, just have a nice full area to move through, so I'm going to open up this slightly faster reinforcement path directly through the center of the map now. So I'm just going to open this up and just going to be seeing him push into this right inside. He took the forward base, of course, to continue this pressure more easily while... Zest obviously took that more defendable right side base. Good first two force fields. I think they are really in just good positions. Target fires one and two wooden mines. The two wooden mines the front here go down as well. His immortals are still going to be a big part of the problem, but they're starting to go down, and now I think Bjorn has just reached this kind of point where all of the earlier fights have come to kind of this stage where Zest has never been able to tech into Storm. It's on the way now, but it's been very delayed. He's never been able to get into any kind of splash damage because he's constantly been on a defense and just preparing to survive the next attack. 
And the consequence of that is that eventually the bio army is just way better than the Protoss army. Uh, still no charge on these zealots as well. And those are just little things which really go such a long way. I say little things, but it's like it's one upgrade, but it's such an important upgrade that gets delayed so heavily because of all the rest of it. The Yai Templar, they drop two feedbacks, but then there's no follow-up to this. And Zest is going to tap out of the game, and Bjorn is going to take the first map of this best of three. Top left-hand side. Gonna have a blue Terran up 1-0 and an SEV out onto the map. This is gonna be Bjorn. Bottom right. It is gonna be our red Protoss player from Dragon Phoenix Gaming, Zest. And hey, TS61, thank you so much for the Prime sub. I appreciate it. Remember Battle of the Boardwalk? Yeah, Battle of the um, Boardwalk was a really crazy map. Like, that was... That actually made ladder as well. Yeah, that map was really wild. I was surprised that map got to ladder. But there's been other maps that we've been surprised got to ladder as well, so I guess we should never be too surprised. Anything is possible. I just remember when Turbo Crew 64 made it to the ladder map pool as well. That map was hated in the competition. Uh, proxy doesn't work out, unfortunately, and as the probe comes and zips and zaps. Hey, what's up, Passerius? Thank you so much for the three-month resub. Jacaranda hasn't been shown on the stream, and Fountainhead hasn't been shown today. Yep, uh, like I said, Jacaranda is played in another of the series coming up, one that was played earlier from replays. Oh, played earlier during the previous matches, and now we'll cast it from replays. Uh, like I say, it's actually been picked a couple times as map 3, just in series that never got to map 3, unfortunately, so. And yeah, Fountainhead, same thing, actually. Fountainhead's been picked a couple times as map 3 and just never got to be played. Um, yeah, just just a little unfortunate more than anything. Like I say, that, that's, that's how the system works, right? There's no perfect way to do it apart from saying, hey, this series is on this map, but I actually think it is important to keep, like, a veto process in these games. Because, at least if you have a veto process, you end up on maps which the players at least prefer over other maps in each matchup or so. And I think that is important because otherwise you just get a map someone's just like, well, I don't want to play on this at all. And they just do something really dumb. And it just encourages the idea of being like a, you know, like a really short, crappy game. That's why we keep the veto process to some extent. Like I say, like those are the kind of maps. So at the end of the tournament, everything will be played a similar amount. But we take, we take, you know, steps to make sure that that's going to be a thing. And Jared Al is really pretty. Sorry, I know we're talking just a lot generally, but maybe not so much about the specific maps we're seeing. I think map, this map is really pretty. I know a few people don't look quite like the bright green in the center. Yeah, I kind of like the green and the pink. Name of the map that was pirate themed with treasure chests? That was Abyssal Reef, right? Double Hellions coming out into Widow Mines on the follow up, a build which we've seen a, a fair amount of, to be fair. You see this uh, a decent amount of the time, as those two Hellions will make their way down to the bottom side of the map. Just gonna see how Hellions wanna try and. Maybe push through the front. Adept and the Stalker here are going to say, no, -uh, not just yet to those Hellions. So they get pushed back a little. Obviously, the Hellions kind of want to combo with the Widow Mines more than anything else here to, to make something happen. As the first two Widow Mines pop out, the next two are on the way. That's what we'll lift up into the medevac to try and create the initial pressure against this blink setup. Uh, no third yet from Zest. He did go robo late, so it is going to be a third base, just again, not immediately. He's taking the third gate before the uh, before he expands. Just a very safe way to play this, actually. Going to make sure he has a good amount of units to help defend this. Four Widow Mines continuing down to the south. Ready to drop into the back of this natural expansion. So in we go. 
Okay, and the Hellions, they want to try and maybe find a chance to kill me. Oh, beautiful bling, that's a dead medevac. Two mines are going to die. Uh, very well done. Kept the Stalkers back, blinked in on top of it, and obviously Bjorn was too committed to pull it away. Even has a blink micro to get rid of this other Widow Mine as well. Very well handled by Zest. And that Widow Mine drop will go nowhere initially. Now Zest feels the comfort, the comfort of going out onto the map. However, these two Hellions might still slip on by. Yes, they will. Warp in from Zest. He was, oh, I was going to say, selecting his gates, and maybe it's on cooldown. He just got that Stalker in time. Another good cleanup. And Zest holds with confidence. Looks really good while holding. Actually, that was a really good defense. Stalkers are going to continue to the top of the map as we do have this bunker down. And a few more Marines rallying out. Another siege tank about to finish building. Stalkers get a depot off to the side. Just going to see the Colossus in production and the Robo and more Marines and Marauder all on the way. Stalkers are just going to continue through and Continuing up to the top, I'm gonna go after this bunker, having to blink back that little bit. Gonna stay out of trouble. Plus one attack, Stim still coming in as well. Well, I mean, obviously Zess had such a good cleanup initially, he should be in a great position from here on out. Able to control the map a bit with these few stalkers, not really gonna let anything you know, happen out at the front of the Terran base for a while. As we're just chilling with these stalkers, the first Colossus has made it onto the field as Zest will begin to defend that left-hand side third base. So I said this yesterday a little bit, and I, I, I had the time to think over it overnight, and looking at some of the other maps, and I still kind of stand by that the only issue I really have with this map is I feel like what makes you want to push up this direction rather than up through the middle? It just feels like this middle avenue is so unnecessary. I, I just feel like all there's like there's just five paths from top to bottom and they're all just doing the same sort of thing. Only in a slightly different direction. I, that might sound kind of dumb. I just feel like it maybe could have been a little bit more intriguing. And especially because these rocks are here initially. There's so limited movement between the lanes early on. It kind of expands on that a little bit, too. I don't know. Just, it's just something I really notice about this map. And I don't know why. Like, It seems like such an abstract thing to notice. But for some reason, it's just kind of in the back of my mind when I'm watching it. But happy to, like I say, that's when you kind of want to see some games go differently. You want to see some games go along so you can see those lanes being used. And hopefully I get proved wrong, you know? I was going to see reinforcements showing up here from Bjorn. Oh, he's actually got Zest's army in a really weird position. He actually needs to unseige now and go for the third. He could maybe cut off Zest's army. Mm, okay, he doesn't make the move. He doesn't quite realize. Maybe it was going to be close getting there in time, but I think it was possible. I think it is something Bjorn could have done. I think the center area should have been high ground. Yeah... I mean, this is kind of cool, right? We've just gone from attacking on the left side, now attacking the center. Being on the center obviously gives you the choice to dive right or dive left. If Zest had taken these bases, obviously Zest doesn't take the right base, he takes the bottom left base, so it's going to promote the left side more. Right, maybe it's not as bad of a thing as I thought. I just thought it was, I, I just felt like personally, like all of these different pathways did the very, you know, did a very similar thing. Anyways, Zelda's so coming up. And uh, those SCVs are going to start dropping. Bjorn has a scary amount of tanks if he can take a fight with them. He even has two more back at home. Zest is taking up. Dark Shrine coming through. Disrupted production is on the way. Zest is setting up to be a very well teched up Protoss player here in the near future. Nine SCVs and the Zealots got out alive as well, by the way. And I'd be able to be useful. Flank in on this army, which is going to get attacked right now. The Zealots come through on the left side at the perfect time as the Colossi and the Stalkers and the Disruptors are coming through. Uh, Stalkers might just want to try to get rid of these couple Vikings, and that will keep the Colossi alive. And that should mean that Zest just wins this fight. And two new tanks show up, but they get cleaned out. And remember that Bjorn just lost economy going into this fight. 
That means we're going to see a game three in this series. We're actually going to go the distance. It feels like for and then, for what Blackburn does do right on the top side of the map, this map does something even crazier with these acceleration zones and the gold base and stuff. So the top of the map is very different. I think the bottom of the map plays very similarly, but with a better defensive setup, harder to push these bases, so easier to take these ones. And I kind of love this double ridge Vespian gas base, because it is kind of like, oh wow, double ridge Vespian, let's go. But it's also, like, really, like, very far forward. Like, that base gets hit easily, and at the very least, killing this assimilator, or extractor, refinery, whatever. That alone should be pretty easy to deny, as Zest just goes super early across the map with his first probe. Let's see if he wants to do anything overly aggressive here. It's 1-1 one, one in this best of three. So, yeah, no, I, I, I kind of like the comparison, I, as long as we don't go full out saying, like, oh, yeah, this is just Blackburn on repeat. That's definitely not the case. Probe coming, scouting around. This map looks so cool. You guys like the look of it? Yeah, I think it's pretty cool. It's actually inhibit. I didn't realize this was a slow zone as well. So there's also a slow zone on one of the drop paths into the main. So it really does a good job of defending the, the bottom side of the map. And then again, the top side of the map is all this speedy stuff if you can get up there. Yeah, this map is pretty. Honestly, at the end of the day, guys, all these map makers are extremely talented, so all the maps are generally very pretty. Uh, this map is by Zweck, by the way, who made some of my personal favorite maps in StarCraft 2. Um... He made uh, Lost and Found, which I thought was a really cool map. He also made, I know not everyone's favorite, but Submarine. I actually really liked Submarine. Um, it was a bit of a shame because people loved, people hated it and Terrans loved it sort of thing. But I actually really liked Submarine. But the other map he made was called Parasite. And Parasite was like a low-key, like way too good of a... Um, it was like way too good of a map, really. For, for just like, uh, like late game macro sort of stuff. But I actually think like Parasite was a really... Nobody really had too many complaints about Parasite. I really like that map. So yeah, some actual really notable uh, maps from more recent StarCraft II history, the last couple of years, rather than years and years back from Zwek, who, who made this map. Zwek also had some maps in other TLMCs, I believe, that never made ladder, but were also really cool. I can't recall names, but I... Um, I, I, you know, I see when, Z when Zwek makes a map, he's one of the map makers who I see, and I'm like, oh yeah, I know this guy, I know that I like what he does. And it gets me interested to see the, you know, the map he's come out with, you know? That moves through, there's a couple more marines are coming up. Blink is on the way. I'm just going to be seeing our stalker on the way up as well, that wolf gate coming through. Hey yeah, guys, if you want to play these maps, you can play them in custom games. You just have to go and search TLMC15 on any server. You'll be able to host up your game. You'll be able to watch. You'll be able to play on these games with your friends and stuff. Parasite was so disgusting for Cannon Rush. Oh, well, I, I ignore those games. I, I look at the the beautiful games beyond that. <laughs> I, I ignore the Cannon Rush aspects of it. As a Terran, I don't really mind when when Zergs get Cannon Rush. You know. Yeah, guys, so uh, uh, people asking about TL uh, maps for the next season. I don't know if we'll get new maps for next season. Because there's not really any other maps left to be used. Right? Like, that's that's kind of the issue. The, the maps from TL... They could maybe use some of the maps from TLMC 14 still. But I, I personally think they've really gone through all of the better maps. Um, it's possible they switch a couple out still. It, it is a possibility. But we might just have these maps for one more season. Well, the good thing is, because the TLMC is now back, and the TLMC is going to happen on a more regular basis again, basically we missed a round of TLMC last year. And because we missed that kind of TLMC, we've been on a bit of like an out-of-sync issue with the maps, and that meant that we had, obviously, the last map pool for so long. Um, now that TLMC is back, we might not have maps for this next season, but I'd imagine this is like the last season we would ever not have like a map change. I imagine like after this season... 
it's just going to, we're always going to have a rotation of maps again. As long as TLMC is happening, because this is how we generally get the maps, I'm, I'm pretty confident that we'll have pretty good rotations of maps once more. Next season's just a bit too soon for this TLMC. Like, this season ends in, like, two weeks. I don't believe TLMC is even over by then, right? And especially not enough time to send the maps to Blizzard, get them QA'd by Blizzard, all that kind of stuff. Because the voting ends on, like, Monday. And then there's generally, like, an iteration phase and stuff as well, right? So, yeah, no, they're just not going to be ready for, for the new ladder season. Fire Force here from Bjorn moving out. Sorry, lots of talk about maps and stuff rather than builds. Excuse me, talking about maps in the map contest tournament. How dare I? Um, but no, I mean, to be fair, there's... I mean, Bjorn's just doing Bjorn right, setting up onto this bio army, third CC moving forward. Kind of cool, Bjorn takes the forward base, Sess takes the backward base. Yeah, I mean, it's difficult for Bjorn to attack into these, even if they aren't protected by the slow zones. Yeah, we might actually get a pretty cool game here. We'll see how Zest handles these incoming drops and this aggression. If Zest can defend this well, we might actually get a really cool game here on Treadmill. That'd be pretty neat. Two medifacts go down the bottom side of the map. Gonna go through this slow zone on the way in, and Zest sees it. So it does make these drops a little bit riskier as well. Yeah, I was going to say, that's an abusable position. Those Zealots on slow warp inside Templars don't have feet, uh, Storm ready yet. It's a lot of gateways unpowered already. As we move through, Storm is 10 seconds or so away. Probes is starting to go down to Templar in range of the bio as well. Bion is just going to kill 20 workers because he's also on the third base with the rest of his bio. And Zest has not split up well at all. He actually had great vision and great control of this position, but he still wasn't able to get here in time. And then he's just completely fallen apart with no defense available on the third base, and that's obviously really bad. Fire comes back around through the top. I'm just going to be seeing the Medivax come back over the right-hand side. A couple of extra warp-ins. Going to see now Medivac get shot down. And obviously hitting before Storm as well just means if you have Storm, like one of these drops gets shut down way more easily, then the rest of it becomes so much easier. Zest's going to try and attack, but we're going to see just how good this defensive position can be. Another Storm drops in on the Marine Marauder trying to move up this slow zone. I mean, I don't think Bjorn's in really much danger. It's just going to take you so long to get into this position. Widowmine hits the Archon. That's uh, morphing, so absolutely no potential to dodge that shot. Storm's still coming through, but there's a layer of Widow Mines you've got to break through here as well as Zest, and I think that's just going to be way too expensive to go through. Zest is going to get up this ramp. There's still a Widow Mine too, a bit further back. Then has to pull the SCVs. Might just want to take this base elsewhere. He drops an EMP. There's no Storms left, so he's actually not in a bad position if he wants to just use the SCVs to tank for this. And that's what he will do in the end as Zest not have the army to compete and unfortunately for Zest, Bjorn is going to have too much and I really felt we were setting up for a really really cool game here on Treadmill and just Bjorn's drop just did that bit too much damage